Welcome to the podcast. Talkline Network Radio, America's longest running Jewish broadcast network, the voice of the Jewish community. And now, you're listening to Talkline with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. Welcome back to the program, Mom Zev Bren. We want to thank Ezra Friedland and the Friedlander Group for coordinating and putting together this segment. To Israel we go. With us right now is Rivka Ravis. She is Chief of Staff for outgoing President of Israel, Rivi Rivlin, who was in the White House, and the President of the United States bowed down to our guest earlier this week. Rivka, thank you for joining us. Good morning to me, and good evening, and Shavuot Tov to all of you. Thank you. So tell us about what happened. There you're in the White House with the President of Israel. You're there with the President of the United States. And how did the conversation lead to you and your status of how many children you have? Um, so I'll start with telling you that I was really very excited from the beginning of uh, the, this treat, trip because I had this honor and host to meet three of uh, United States uh, presidents. We met Obama at the White House. We met uh, Trump at our house in Jerusalem. And then uh, now I was on my way to meet the third uh, president of the uh, United States for me, uh, President uh, Joe Biden. Um, so I, I was really excited from the beginning of, uh, of the trip. And then when we began the meeting, so there's a part of the meeting that the president meets him in what's called tete-a-tete, -tete, just uh, the two of them. As chief of staff, I was uh, there in the room, and then it was really uh, 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 very uh, warmly. He, uh, he greeted our president very uh, warmly, and he hugged him, and they were having a nice uh, small chat. And then um, President Rivlin um, pointed uh, towards me and said, uh, this is my chief of staff. She is very orthodox, and you won't believe how many children she has. So he looked at me and he said, how many? And uh, Rivlin answered and said, 12 children. And he was like going, wow, I can't believe it. That can't be. Are you sure? 12? Is that true? And I said, yes, that's true. Um, there are 12. And there are even some grandchildren already. And um, like he was going, wow, I'm coming from, um, from a Christian uh, family. My mother, if she would hear this, you can't believe that. You know what? I have to uh, go down on my knees uh, for honoring you for having 12 children. <laughs> you know, it was like uh, really, uh, I said, wow, that can be. <laughs> it was surprising. I, I had a mazal that there was a, a photograph of there because if not that, no one would believe me as, as a thing like that happened. Wow. Did he try to hug you, too? Um, no. He uh, he tried to shake hands, and, that, and President Zellin explained that uh, she is uh, uh, orthodox. She doesn't uh, uh, shake hands with men and things like that, he was telling him. And then he said, well, you have to uh, see my mother. And he crossed with me the room from side to side. At a, a small table, he had a picture of his mother on, and he said, this is my mother. Um, it was a picture of his mother and the swearing of him and Obama, like when Obama was said to be a president and he a vice president. And she was standing between the two of them wearing a red um, dress. Uh, he told us she was uh, more than 90 years then. And he was telling us a story about uh, President Obama, um, uh, freezing in some point of uh, the swearing, and she was going, come on, come on, boy, I'll take you on, and it, it made him laugh. So there's also a picture of the three of us laughing uh, from his joke. And it sounded like a fascinating meeting. What else was discussed at the meeting? Um, then started the official meeting, and they discussed very uh, serious uh, issues as uh, nuclear uh, Iran, and some of the, um, the assistance that Israel needs from the states for Putin and things like that. Um, I can't speak about all those issues, but um, what was uh, able to be announced, we announced out after the meeting. And uh, did, for example, did he talk about Bennett, the new prime minister? Because that's uh, somebody yeah, new on the yeah, scene. He, yeah, he said he's very happy with the new um, network. Exactly with the new, but that Israel has a government, 
uh, after so many years. We didn't, and so many elections around and around. So he was very happy, and he said he would invite Bennett. So that's also a good uh, thing to know, that he would invite our prime minister to visit the White House. Uh, Bennett was very happy to hear that. And we are ready for that. Now, with, with Iran, did the, there are some reports that Israel said they won't do anything without letting the United States know about attacking, attacking Iran. Would that come up in the conversation as well? Rivka? Yeah, now here. <clears throat> yeah. Now, did, did anything come up in the conversation? There were some reports that Israel had agreed with the United States not to attack Iran without coordinating or letting the United States know in advance. Did that come up in the conversation as well? I didn't hear them speaking about that. I know that uh, Prime Minister Bennett said that Israel has the right to uh, save uh, her people at any point. Now, how long was the whole meeting? Um, it was longer than an hour. It was supposed to take uh, one hour, and then um, his uh, protocol was starting to put uh, notes, small notes in his hand and telling him that time is out, but he just said it's very important, and he went on and on. I think it was almost uh, an hour and a half. Wow. Wow. It sounded like a fascinating yeah. meeting. Did the president bow to you a second time when, when, when he left? Or you left the meeting? <laughs> no. No, he was just very nice, and he walked us out, and uh, his people walked us out. And, uh, it was really very nice. They gave us small um, packages of, of uh, candies with the name of uh, the president on it. Was it, was, it, was it kosher candies? I, I think it is kosher. It's O-U-D. Oh, it had O-U-D. Oh, <laughs> fascinating. That in the yeah, White House, fine. A, yeah, it's M&M's with... Uh, Flag of the White House on it, and uh, his sign on the package, and I saw a small OUD on it. <laughs> wow! I'm not sure I'll eat it. I think I'll save them. Because you do a call of Israel now. Did the president say anything to you as you, as you were leaving the meeting? Did he say anything more about twelve kids or about how he was impressed with you? No. In the in the end of the meeting, uh, I, uh, we didn't speak again about that. We just like he really was very nice, saying nice. Uh, Bye-bye, and walking us uh, towards uh, the, uh, the door. Did he give you a tour of the White House, uh, other parts aside from where you were meeting? No, we no, we didn't take a tour. They offered us, but we were, um, we were in, a, in a rush because we had to meet um, at the Congress. We had some meetings, and then we had the trip back, so uh, he didn't uh, do that. Now, you sat through the entire meeting, correct? Now, did you get the impression, because there's, there's obviously some people feel that President Biden is not as pro-Israel as President Trump. Did you get the sense that he's very pro-Israel in your meeting? No, no, not at all. I think he was really very nice to President Rivlin, and he gave us a very welcome good uh, feeling. Uh, we didn't feel any different. Um, so you feel that, he, that so no, you felt the same kind of warmth that you got from Trump, yet you felt you got that from Joe Biden? That's what I felt, yes. I think he's an oh, heavy star. And uh, as always, the American, uh, the American president saw uh, towards uh, our government. Now, Rivka, let me ask you this. You're a Haredi woman. How did you end up working for President Rivi Rivlin, being his chief of staff, considering that you're Haredi? And he's maybe traditional, but he's certainly not religious. First of all, uh, President Rivlin is really traditional, and he is on Shabbat, and he understands. And always, he, I never felt uh, a problem with that, and never in the 23 years that I'm working with him. It always was like I got my Hana, and, and everyone was uh, okay with being, and me being uh, Haredi and Shomer Shabbat and um, Yantef and all those things. I never had a problem with that. So, oh no! Thank God, thank God. How'd you meet him in the first place? Um, I met him when I was working with my father-in-law in the Knesset. My father-in-law was uh, the head of uh, the finance committee, and uh, Reverend was a member of the committee, and we got uh, to know one each other there, and um, that's how I met him. And who was your father-in-law? Uh, Rabbi Abraham Rabitz, he was the head of uh, Yahadut HaTorah, oh, and sure. the head of, sure. Uh, sure. yeah, yeah. Sure. Young, uh, older people than you know him very well, but the youngest, the young 
actors uh, don't know them so good. Uh, so, uh, but uh, he, he was a known member of Knesset and a known head of, uh, um, of, the, of, of, the, of the finance committee of the Knesset. Riff Garofis is our guest from Israel, the president of the United States, bound to her. We'll try to squeeze in one or two phone calls, 212-769-1925, 212-769-1925. You want to email us, zevbrenner at gmail.com. That's zevbrenner at gmail.com. Now, President River, Rivlin is about, he's going out of office. When does he officially yeah. leave the presidency to make room for Yitzhak Herzog? Yeah, the last day is supposed to be Friday. It's coming Friday. Um, but because of Rosh Chodesh Av and the starting of Kish Atayamim and uh, Buzhi Herzog um, uh, doesn't want to come into a new house on Kish Atayamim, so we would leave uh, two days before. We would leave on uh, Wednesday. And uh, he would go to his new house. And uh, our new president, Buzhi Herzog, will come into the presidency. Very nice. So he's, he's, he's leaving a couple of days early to make room for the new president, Isaac Herzog, so he shouldn't have to move in during the nine days so he can get there before right. the nine days, only in Israel. Right. Here's an email question. <laughs> Yehudas writes, did your guests see any cognitive issues with President Biden? There's a lot of talk that he's not, uh, that he doesn't have full cognitive abilities. Did you see anything to that nature? No, not at all. He was sharp, full cognitive, very nice. <laughs> And very uh, focused. I, I didn't see anything like that. Now you've been twenty some years working with the president of Israel, uh, with, with with Rivlin. Are you going to work for the new president, Herzog? Just for a small uh, t- um, time, just for uh, helping him getting into his uh, new job. He asked me to stay with him as his assistant, but um, as his advisor. But um, I, I decided I want to go uh, for a new path, for uh, my uh, new job that I was uh, offered in the new government, and um, I told him that. He was not so happy with that. Uh, so I'll stay a few uh, weeks to help him, and then um, I'm going out. Oh, so you're going so you're gonna switch up. What kind of work are you going to be doing? Uh, it's not, uh, it's not um, published yet. I have to... You have to first oh, finalize. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, what's what's the president Rivlin going to be doing while in retirement? Um, he has a lot of work uh, waiting for him in Israel. Um, he gets a, an office of a, a former president, and he gets staff, and he has a lot of invites to speak and to travel for people and to uh, have speeches. And I'm, I'm sure he will uh, continue mm-hmm. doing very good and well for Israel. And he would uh, have a lot of trauma to Am Israel and to Ayat Israel as a former president. Is he going to write a book? He He's, he's writing a book, almost. And um, he's almost finished. And, yeah, it will be published in the coming weeks. Oh, it will be. And you had a hand in helping yeah. write the book as well? Uh, yeah. He didn't need a lot of my help, but yeah. Uh-huh. Fascinating. Listen, uh, good yeah. luck on your new career. We appreciate your yeah. being with us. And again, j- just I was curious to know, were you shocked when the President of the United States bowed down to you in, in the White House? <laughs> I was pretty shocked, yeah. I was pretty shocked, yeah. I'll tell you what, I was shocked, and then I got a very strong um, uh, thought coming in my, my head. Um, he didn't bow to me because I'm a doctor of computing and science or because I'm a chief of staff. He bowed to me because I'm a mother. Like, he really admires the family and the motherhood and my decision to have 12 children and to have uh, uh, most of my time with the children. Like, he, he really admired that. So it, it made me think about it since then. I'm, I'm uh, I have a lot of thoughts about the president of the of the United States, the most strong uh, state in the world. Uh, to whom did he bow? To a mother of twelve children, for her being a mother. Wow! And and, and uh, did he did he did he understand that you couldn't shake his hand because you're Haredi? Did he understand yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he did. 
Because I'm sure he must have had other experience like that. Uh, here's a final question coming in from Tzvi. Isn't Prime Minister Naftali Bennett moving into his new residence during the nine days? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. I, I didn't. Uh, I'm not, I don't know. I could ask. I yeah, I'll be Somebody just wrote that, so we'll <laughs> we'll, we'll follow up with our next guest. Anyway, I want to. Uh, so, any any closing thoughts that you have? Yeah. So I think that's the real uh, thing. Uh, I would like mothers uh, um, to uh, to think about, um, and maybe that would make their week uh, better. We're going to squeeze in one call before I let you go, and uh, let's go to Moshe in Brooklyn. You have a question for our guest. Go ahead, Moshe. Hi, Rivka. Shavotov. Yes, go ahead. Um, Rivka, I want to ask you, do you think that President Biden also um, knelt, uh, bowed, bowed before you, uh, because you are uh, religious, Haredi? Or is it only because you, you're a mother of uh, 12, can I, uh, Blianara? I believe that some of, of, uh, of it is because of being, being religious. I don't know if he uh, understands the uh, differences between being uh, Jewish religious or a Christian. I, I know, but I, I believe if it, he had some, uh, some respect Effect. to the fact of, be, of me uh, being uh, very religious and uh, standing on my... Uh, uh, right. So, because you were a proud, a proud Orthodox uh, Jewish woman, uh, he, that yeah. that, ha- that played a part in the fact that he respected you. I, I believe, but that's what that, it's not what he said. He just said that. Uh, that being, uh, all, all he said was is that he's that he's just down down because you were a mother of twelve children. Did you tell him, didn't you read the Bible, that, well, it was more than one wife, that uh, Patriarch Jacob had 12 kids, but it was more than one wife. So I guess that wouldn't have been a good example from the Bible. Moshe, thank you for your phone call. We appreciate it. Okay, and I want to thank you, uh, Rivka, for joining us, and good luck on your new career. We look forward to having you back again. And are you going to write a book about your experiences? Um, 20? Maybe. <laughs> I'm a bit young for that, but maybe I'll think about it. Are you 20-some, what, 25 years with the President of Israel? Um, 23, yeah. 23 years. But, uh, more than 25 years in the, in the politics and parliament. In um, politics and parliament. Working, yeah. All right. R- R- Rivka, thank you so much for joining us. And Shavuot Tov. Thank you. Shavuot Tov. And there you heard the woman who President Joe Biden bowed down to. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Talk line radio and TV with Zeb Brenner is just phenomenal. Everybody concerned about the Jewish community should listen and watch. He has the best guests. He asks the most interesting questions. He's always so well prepared. It's talk radio and television from a Jewish point of view at its very best. To advertise on the Talkline network and Talkline's email and social media blasts reaching over 70,000 people, please call 212-769-1925, extension 100. That's 212-769-1925, extension 100. Or email info at talklinenetwork.com. Thanks for listening. For continuous Jewish programs, talklinenetwork.com or our 24-hour-a-day listen line at 641-741-0389. For past shows, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Instagram, and all major podcast platforms or jewishpodcast.org. Thanks for listening to the talklinenetwork.com.